Hello, everybody. I am Matluba Muhammadova. I'm going to have an online class today with you. Today, we are going to speak about 10 effective tips of letter writing for the third year students. There are 10 effective uh, tips of uh, letter writing. The first one is to identify the type of letter you are being asked to write. It will be a formal, semi-formal or informal letter. The entire tone of your letter is based on your answer to this question. Adjust your style and choice of words according to the type of letter you have been asked to write. The second one is to open and close the letter correctly. Remember that each type of letter requires a different opening and closing. I'm going to give you the chart. This chart will help you to remember this. And the third one is to open a formal and semi-formal letter with a formal sentence. Don't try to be friendly as you don't know the person you are writing to. Get right down to business and indicate the reason you are writing. For example, Dear Sir, Ma'am or Madam, I'm writing to inquire about, I'm writing it in connection with Dear Mr. Jones, I'm writing to inform you, I'm writing in connection with. The fourth one is to open an informal letter with a general friendly paragraph. With friends whom we know, we care about the cool person, we have a border relationship in the context of which this communication is taking place. So it is best to acknowledge that friendship first before getting down to the reason for your letter. In fact, the first paragraph could be purely friendly, small talk, in related to the reason for your writing. Look at the example below. Dear Jane, I hope you and your family are all well. It was such a pleasure to see you again last summer. We sure had a great time catching up with each other after so many years. You have always been a cherished friend, no matter how much of a gap there has been since we met. Anyway, the reason I'm writing is that I have some good news. I'm getting married this summer. The fifth one, identify the main purpose of the letter. Are you asking for help, apologizing, inviting someone, complaining or thanking someone? Learn appropriate and polite expressions that will support what you need to say. The sixth one is to learn and use standard written phrases. Students sometimes struggle to finish their writing in time. This happens when you are trying to write every sentence from scratch. The fact is, in conventional letter writing in English, we use a number of standard expressions and phrases and add on to them the specific information we wish to communicate. By learning how to use these expressions, you will find the letter writing task much easier and will never have to fight for them. The seventh, make sure you write at least 150 words. Practice writing less till you know what 150 words feels like and looks like. You will lose marks if you write less. You will not lose marks if you write more. The only restriction on writing more is in terms of time, not the number of words. The aides learn the correct spelling of commonly used words. It is surprisingly how many students make a mistake when spelling words such as sensually, faithfully, in connection with, and so on. You can prevent yourself from losing marks by learning the correct spelling of these words and expressions 
which you are highly likely to use on your exam. There are some examples are given here. The ninth, stay on topic. In order to complete your letter within 20 minutes or less, practice writing letters where you stick to, her, to the point. The general task one does require you to make up a bit of a story to complete your letter, but don't make your story so complicated that you run out of time. The tense include all these valid points. If you exclude even one of the points given to you in the question prompt, you will lose valuable marks. Practice writing letters that include the three points and go back and check that you have included them in each practice exercise you do. Your home task is to write a complete letter. There is an example. And the second one is to write a letter home. This, this, uh, uh, this should be done at home. Now we are going to talk about uh, grammar and we are going to speak about phrasal verbs. What does a phrasal verb mean? A phrasal verb is a verb like pick up, turn on, get on with. The two or three words that make up a phrasal verb from a short phrase, which is why we call them phrasal verbs. These verbs consist of a basic verb and another word or words. But the phrasal verb is still a verb. For example, look is a verb. Look up is also a verb, but uh, it has a different meaning. They don't have the same meaning and they behave differently grammatically. I'm going to explain you how phrasal verbs are formed and how they are used in a sentence. So, how we form a phrasal verb? We add a preposition to a verb, for example, look, which is a verb and preposition could be out. I look out of the window. However, if I were to stay, to say, sorry, look out, there is a car. The meaning is changed because we change the situation and the context. In this case, I mean to be careful because there is a car. You cannot always understand phrasal verbs by looking at the individual words. Turn on. The good example of this is I turn on the television. Turn on its own way means to rotate but together with on it means to activate function. I turn on the television. You mustn't listen word by word. You have to try understand phrase as whole. But phrasal verbs can have multiple meanings. Take of your jacket. The plane takes off soon. We can see take off is used in different situation. So how we can know which of the meanings are being in tandem. So mean to do this is to look at context and situation around phrasal verb. Take off your jacket. Jacket is clothing, so it means the plane leaves soon on to the air. Mana kurup turgan mistik phrasal verblarni ma'nosi turlicha bo'ladi. U bitta ma'noda emas, turli xil ma'nolarda ishlatiladi. Phrasal verb qanaqa qilib yasaymiz? Oddi bitta felga prelog qo'yishimiz bilan uni ma'nosi o'zgarib ketadi. Bu turli xil ma'nolarni bildiradi. Siz bilan biz bir qancha misollarni ko'rib chiqdik. Some phrasal verbs are separable. I put on my dress. I put my dress on. My dress is the object, so there is the object at the end. We can put the object between verb and preposition. The meaning doesn't change. The type of phrasal verb is called a separable phrasal verb. The play takes off cannot be separable, so we cannot put the object between verb and preposition. This type of phrasal verb is called as unseparable phrasal verb. You must learn which phrasal verbs are separable and which are not. Shuningdek, bir phrasal verb 
bulunadigan phrasal verblar deb ham aytiladi. Masalan, I put on my dress. I put on my dress. My dress with the object. Objectdan keyin biz predlogni qo'yishimiz mumkin. Bir xil phrasal verblarimiz bo'linmaydigan phrasal verblar deb ataladi. Masalan, the plane takes off oldik. Bu yerda biz objectdan keyin prepositionni qo'ya olmaymiz. Feldan keyin predlog kelishi kerak. Sometimes you can make a verb sound more informal by adding preposition, conventional, or even childish. Eat your dinner. Eat up your dinner. I would be more inclined to say, eat up your dinner, to say child. The meaning doesn't change. It's more conventional and childish. Thank you for your attention. Your home assignment to find some phrasal verbs and make up sentences using these phrasal verbs and explain the meaning of using them in this sentence. Our lesson is over.